Alright guys, so in this video, um, we're going to be going over the Launch C Reader Elite 200. Um, this is a scan tool I picked up as a giveaway. So uh, let's get to the unboxing of this. And then after the unboxing, we're going to be trying it out on to a few cars. And then after that, I will be giving the details on uh, how to apply to win this. So, uh, so let's get started with the uh, the review of this tool. So, uh, this is the C Reader Elite 200. Now, there are three models of this. We have the C Reader Elite. Ooh, try to bring it up for everyone. I don't know how the light's going to catch it. Uh, that should be good. All right, so we have the C Reader Elite 200, which is this model right here. Then we have the C Reader Elite 202 and the C Reader Elite 205. Now, this uh, these models um, can do engine, they can do airbag, and they can do ABS. Uh, they cannot do any other uh, any other type of modules. Okay, but there are uh, full system functions that you can actually purchase into the upgrade section of this um, the scanner. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, here we have uh, a color screen, ABS, SRS, engine. Number of resets for the EDC Reader 200 is zero. But as I said, there is software that can be purchased later. Um, OBD2 modes, it does support that. The mall, which is basically like their upgrade function. It is updatable and the update by this one is done by Wi-Fi. So there's no plugging into your computer. You can actually do all your updates and everything over the, over a stable Wi-Fi connection. Uh, record and playback. You can do a live data stream and it has a bunch of different languages onto it. The specifications of this unit are listed right here. We have an LCD, which is four inch, 480 by 800 P. Uh, it has an OBD2 interface input voltage of nine to 18 volts. Uh, it should only be stored in temperatures of up to minus 20 degrees Celsius and up to a, a maximum of 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, operating temperature is from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, dimensions are 160 millimeters by 80 millimeters by 25.5 millimeters. And the net weight is 500 grams. So those are the box specs. Um, when we come on to the front, you see that we have OBD2 functions. We have in the upgrade or shopping mall, if you want to call it, we have graphing. We can uh, do reports, diagnostic trouble codes. So you can actually search for your trouble codes in this unit and it will give you a description of that trouble code. Uh, diagnostic feedback, upgrade, and as I said before, it's uh, multilingual. So with all that being said, let's go ahead, open up the unit, see what the inside contacts come with, and then we'll go from there. I have not opened this yet. I was waiting to do this with you guys, so I might take a minute or two, go read the user's manual, so we can get a good understanding of how this guy's supposed to operate. So, the contents are the uh, scanner, or OBD2 reader. We have the USB-C, uh, data transfer cable, which is right here. We have the unit. We have a quick start guide, which is right here, and we have the full user's manual. So what I'm gonna do right now is take and go over the user's manual to see what we need to do in order to get started with this, and then I'll come back. A few moments later. All right, finished reading the book. Uh, some pretty interesting stuff in there. Um, so now what we're gonna do is take and use this super, super long USB-C cable to power up the unit because from what I can tell, it is automatically powered as soon as the it is um, plugged onto the vehicle. There is no external power button or anything just to turn the unit on. Uh, before we power it up, let's go over some features of this that is not yet activated. Uh, it will be, apparently they're going to be activated later on, but for right now they're just not working. So we have the USB-C. Try to bring the light over for everyone. 
know if you can see that clearly. Oh, my kids were playing with my lights. All right, so I think we can see it a little bit clearer now. All right, so here is our USB-C. Now that is active. Uh, it's used to uh, power up the unit when you're not using, uh, when it's not plugged up to a car. Uh, after that, we have also a micro SD slot that's right here. Now this micro SD slot, it is not yet activated from what I read into the book. I'm not gonna take that, what they say. I'm gonna try it out afterwards and see if we can add a memory card into it. So I added a memory card into the unit and it didn't change anything. Um, this unit does come with 12 and a half gigs of internal storage, so I think that's more than enough. To uh, expand our memory uh, capacities of the unit. So uh, we'll try that out after. Right now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take the USB-C, we're gonna plug in the USB-C, make sure that it works, because my cable might not work. There might be a cable issue and not a unit issue, guys. Just so, just bear with me. There we go. So the unit is powering up. Now, from what I uh, gathered, there's a few steps that you have to do before actually getting into the 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 C Reader Elite really 200. Um, first, you're gonna have to set your language. You're gonna have to put in a, f a few little tidbits of information, and then you have to put in your assign your uh, Wi-Fi network to the unit also. So uh, the screen is fully, uh, it's a full touch screen, so we can just click on the start button. If you guys can't see the start button, I'll try and give it to you so you guys can see it. So all we have to do is click on the start button. Now these buttons back here are, are just like quick access, so if you wanna go back one page, if you wanna go straight to the home, or if you wanna go into the settings, well, you press that button right there. So um, we're gonna click on the start. The first one, on there is English, so we're gonna click on English. We're gonna go to the next step. Uh, select time zone. We are Canada. I don't know if we'll get Canada, maybe not. I don't think so. We'll get America, uh, New York. We'll use America, New York. It's pretty close to my time zone here, so we'll go with that one. Uh, I'm gonna put in my Wi-Fi information. And as you can see right there, it says connecting, and we are connected. I don't know if you guys can see it. So we're gonna go on to our next step. Um, you can get a QR code. What the QR code is for, they actually didn't even mes mes mention in the user's manual. So we'll just click on next step. Uh, workshop information. Okay, I'm gonna skip that portion because that's where you can actually put your shop name, uh, your email address, your address, and your telephone number onto uh, your reports because after you actually scan the vehicle, you can actually create reports with this and actually print them out for the customer. So we're gonna skip. Please read the user agreement. I agree to all the above. Like I said, I'm not gonna be using this, you guys are. So the way that this works is that the first diagnose button that you see at the top, that's gonna be for a full system diagnosis. So basically it's gonna go in and it's gonna scan every single module that's onto the vehicle or that the tool is able to scan and it will give you the DTCs for each and every module and you'll be able to go in and see live data for those modules. OBD2 is just a quick scan. It's just gonna go in, do a quick scan, see what's going on. Now the reset functions, um, we don't actually have any supported uh, reset functions right now. It says to please purchase in the mall, but it's not, supported right now onto this tool. So uh, we're just gonna exit that, okay? Now the upgrade. This is where we go in and we get our uh, our vehicles. So the first thing that we're gonna do is download uh, the down, download bin CRE. Then after that, we're gonna get the auto search. That's for our auto bin. Now what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm gonna put, uh, we're gonna go unselect all those, we are gonna take Chrysler and Jeep, that's for sure. Uh, Chrysler and Jeep. After that, we are gonna take Evo BD. We are also gonna take uh, Honda and Acura, and we are gonna take Kia. Okay, now the reason I'm picking those uh, cars is because those are the three cars that I actually have on the premises where I can actually go and do some testing. So right now what I'm gonna do is just click the update. 
I'm going to let this go through and then I'll we'll bring you guys back after everything is gone through and installed. So now everything is installed that I want installed onto this unit. Um, after this uh, review and uh, testing, uh, I will be resetting the tool back to factory. So uh, when you whoever wins this tool, uh, you'll be able to go in and set everything up as you like it. Yeah, so let's continue with the review. So now after you have downloaded, you can actually go into the diagnose uh, section now. Now you can go, as you plug up to the vehicle, it will be either Auto Detect, Acura, Chrysler, Dodge, Honda, uh, Jeep, Kia. That's, those are the makes that are on this one right now. Okay, I'll show you guys that. All right, now, before you get the auto detect, you have to go into the settings, okay? Um, if I'm not mistaken. So, you have to make sure that this automatic de detection is actually uh, put onto the on uh, position where it is right now. If it's not, you guys will not be able to auto detect, okay? You will click the auto detect and it will not do it. Uh, so, make sure that this little tick right here is red, and when it's red, it means it's activated. So we'll just go back, we'll go back again. So we did, uh, so so far we've went through the diagnose, we've went through OBD, we went through reset, we went through upgrade, and now data. So data is where we are gonna get our diagnostic records, our diagnostic report, and our DTC library, which is what I mentioned to you guys uh, a while ago. So here we can actually get a code definition. Okay, so we can go like P, one, two, one, zero. Let's see. That's just random one. We'll click forward. We'll click OK. Injector control pressure above expected level. So as you can see, it can give you a uh, a DTC look lookup if you're not unfamiliar with a uh, DTC code. So from there, after that, we have images. That is empty. So the feedback uh, button is when you're having an issue with the, the tool when you're diagnosing a vehicle. So you would come over, you would click the feedback, and you would go ahead and you would pick the vehicle that you were having an issue uh, with the diagnosis. Now you're going to take that and it's going to send it to launch and they're going to analyze the data that was onto it and what the issue might be. Okay, now firmware fix. So uh, there's a firmware fix where if your VCI is not working properly, you can go ahead and you can uh, just download the firmware fix. Uh, right now, this one is being updated because this one does not have the latest and greatest from launch because this is a new tool right out of the box. So after doing this update, there might be uh, some features or functions that we are able to uh, purchase. I don't know. That's what we're going to see right now. And now it says that the firmware was successfully installed. So typically I would think that the tool would uh, would, re would restart itself, but apparently that's all it's gonna do. So uh, then we have a user's manual, which is on here. So if ever you use, lose this guy, right here, you always have a, a uh, on-the-go manual straight in the tool. And like I said, this is a, the scan tool platform is uh, Android based. So when you click on to something, you can actually take and zoom in onto it. So it's not just the size of the screen. So it actually works as a four inch Android tablet if you want. So we're gonna go there. Let's go to resets, see if there's anything there. And there is no resets. Uh, data, we don't have anything in data, settings. Like I said, for right now, this tool does not have any resets, but like I said, that could change in the upcoming future. So that is it for the unboxing of the tool, a quick overview of the tool and how it works. And uh, next, we'll be going on to a vehicle, or three vehicles, hopefully, to see how this uh, little tool actually works. So that will be the next portion. I'll see you guys at the car. All right, guys, so now we're going to be taking and we're going to be testing out the uh, launch uh, code reader Elite 200 onto vehicles, uh, see how it responds. Um, basically, what we're going to look for is its auto VIN capabilities. 
if it can really read the ABS, SRS, and Android computers. And if it can read them, what type of data can we get out of them? And what type of data, uh, what type of graphs can we get out of the data streams also? So that's going to be the, my main focus is my main focus with uh, using this. First, we're going to start on my vehicle because I know I have a check engine onto it. Uh, if you guys remember, I posted pictures not that long ago about uh, a uh, issue with the fuel tanks and it's still not resolved to 100%. So um, yeah, we're going to be checking that. So I just plugged it into the OBD2 board. It is turning on and it goes right into the auto VIN detection. So that's pretty neat. We have the XM model. You got to know what type of model that you're using. And it gives you a nice little uh, report. So from here, we can share it. Okay, so we'll send it to me and we'll see what happens. Even though I have no, oh, I don't have any shop information. So I don't think we're going to be able to, but we'll try. So we're going to take them. We're going to send this. We'll see if it's sent. And it said send and succeeded. So I'll see on my phone if I get a message. Uh, so from there, we'll be able to print it out. So that's pretty neat. Uh, WCS has two faults that I was uh, I was expecting. I'll go cut off and I'll go cut off. ESP is good. Airbag is good. Um, for some reason, we are not seeing the engine. So we can get our hardware numbers and our uh, software numbers out of the modules. Uh, read fault codes. I don't think we're going to get be able to get any live data out of the WCS. Built to re-enter, the program is about to exit the system. Okay, so we weren't able to get into that. Let's go into airbag module one. Uh, read fault codes and let's see what we have in data stream. No supported data in data stream. Uh, number two, we'll see what's in there. We'll read the data stream out of that. No supported data, but we can read fault codes. Module information. Like I said, we're going to try out onto Honda after and see. Uh, that's why I wanted to try on three different vehicles. I wanted to see exactly what uh, how this tool would react. I already clicked on that. They give you your part numbers and everything. That's nice. Okay. So, um, ESP. We're going to click exit. Really quit. Yes. ESP SRS. Go to read data stream, see if it reads it. And here we have some stuff. It's not uncommon for the aftermarket scan tools not to be able to see all the data uh, in the airbag modules on Kia anyway, from my personal experience. It's nothing that's uh, horrible, I would say, but it's nice to have that data in case you want to go in and you want to take and you want to diagnose like an airbag system or something like that. So um, as you noticed on the screen, there was no area for like a check engine. So uh, for the check engine, you actually have to go for in the OBD2. And then we're going to load up our protocols. Okay. As we see right here, it says OBD2 ISO CAN, uh, CAN bus protocol match. Uh, the J1850 is going to say failed, 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 failed. But uh, as long as we have one that's matching, that's the one that we're going to take and we're going to select. We'll wait. Let it finish up and as you can see failed but now if we take and we click on this area it's going to enable the session and here we can see our vin status on dtc's in this ecu one readiness uh, completed eight not supported is two and it gives you your uh, protocol types so from there we're going to go to mode three which is all the way down here which is our fault codes we can clear our fault codes from here also Read vehicle information, TCM, calibration ID, calibration ID number, and ECU name. So we can actually get a few little uh, tidbits of information from there. ID number is right there. Uh, ECM engine control module. Let's go with calibration ID. It gives you your calibration ID. Uh, calibration ID number is going to be that one. In use performance tracking spark ignition engines. Sorry about that. Then it gives you your uh, ignition counters, uh, Kellis monitors. That's perfect. That we are okay with. 
Test results, clear fault codes, read freeze frame data. So if we have if you want to go see your freeze frame data, you can do that. And there's three uh, pages of freeze frame data. And you can actually select which ones that you want. Combine. Yeah, so you can actually select whichever ones that you want. So, and then we can also take and we can record. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. And we are going to go into read fault codes because rest scanner should be able to read your fault codes, right? So P0442, 442, and 442. So that's perfect. Um, when we click on help, yeah, it gives you a uh, description of uh, what the code is, how that code is generated. So that's going to be good for, for people who don't know how the codes are being generated. And if we click on code search, so as you can see, we are on Google right now uh, after uh, clicking on the code uh, search and it brings you up and it gives you a general description of the code. And then if we keep on scrolling, we can actually see some videos on uh, some possible fixes. So uh, there's ways to help you out with diagnosing with this, that's for sure. So on my Kia, uh, uh, pretty impressed. It was able to read the WCS, even though it wasn't able to give us any uh, any data from that. Uh, airbag control module, no data, but if it gets a code, we'll be able to read the codes at least. Um, like I said, I'm I already wrote them through this uh, through the scanner to launch about not being able to read the data. So we'll see what they say about that. Now we're gonna take and we're gonna go on to the Honda, and we're gonna see what uh, we can do with the Honda. All right, I got it loaded up inside the Honda now. Uh, it's just turning on now. Uh, we're going to take and we are going to start the Honda. Because I don't want to kill my batteries. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, we don't want no music. We'll turn off the, the ventilation so it doesn't make any wind noise. Uh, it is doing an auto scan of the VIN. So, so far, the... Uh, the speed of connection is actually pretty pretty is pretty quick. Um, there is the VIN number, 2013 Honda Civic, which is correct. Um, where was I? Yeah, the speed and connection onto the vehicle is actually pretty quick. Uh, I'm actually very surprised for the size of the tool. Uh, we're going to click OK. Uh, we are in Canada. The checking will take some time. Do you wish to execute this test? Yes. The ignition should be on, but the engine should not be running. Uh, we'll turn it off just because they're asking us to. Let's go see what it found, shall we? Uh, modular control unit power source circuit low voltage. Not as far as I know. Okay. Uh, power steering. Problem in VSA system, power relay stuck off. Okay, so these codes I have seen before. Um, that's normally a control module that lives underneath there that ends up going bad. All right, so let's go into uh, ABS. It's just letting you know that it's going to quick communication. Like I said, the tool is actually pretty quick. I'm very, very surprised. We're going to go ACUID. Uh, we'll go into some read data stream. So... Let's go select all. We'll just click OK. Automatic uh, transmission range is in reverse. Neutral park first. So that's good. ABS indicator off. As you can tell, I don't have anything on my dash for the e, uh, EPS. So the, I didn't see if they were in history. I'm going to go check that. Because don't forget, I also took and I performed an update on this car. And uh, I can't remember if I scanned any race to codes. Uh, let's scroll down. Brake switch. Brake pressure is working. Brake indicator off. So that is not working. Air pressure sensor adaptations. There it is. So the brake switch is right there. So we can see that that's switching from on to off. There are six pages of data, quite a bit. Communication normal. Communication with LO cruise control, we don't have that. We don't have that. EBB, we don't have. PCM normal. So quite a, uh, quite a bit of uh, information on this. Uh, 
if we go to record, it's, it takes in and starts recording the data for you. So as you're driving, so that's pretty good. So if you need to go and there's uh, some wheel speed sensors for you. So for ABS and airbag right now, uh, we are doing pretty good. We, I didn't actually want to save it, so you have 71 data pids on this one. So quite a bit of data pids. Okay, so now we're going to check out the airbag. Let's see. So I'm guess it, it really does uh, depend on turn the ignition switch off. It doesn't want the ignition switch on to go into there, which is weird. On communicating. Let's go to read data stream. Let's just take this one. So there's only 10 PIDs in this one, which is quite okay. We'll just take those two. Not near, unbuckled. So, driver seat position. I don't even have a position for this, so we'll keep it like that. And it says that it's buckled, so that's good. So at least we know that those PIDs are working also. So, so far, it is doing a very, very good job. Go into the e EPS, ESP, sorry. Depending on what is on your vehicle, you will be able to get into some modules that are associated with other modules, from what I can tell. So just because it says only ABS, you can actually get into your electronic power steering from what I can see. So we're gonna go like this, we'll go auto select. There's 46 PIDs into the electronic power steering. So we'll click okay. When we click this, it gives us our graph. So that's good. And that's just by me turning the, the steering wheel a little bit. Okay, as you can see it right there. All right, so that is very responsive. So as you can see right here too, it always gives you an indication of what your battery voltage is. Mm. Power relay on. So basically the codes that we're saying was that this little relay right here was stuck in the off position even with the car on. So if that's stuck in the off position, you're not going to have any power steer any electronic power steering. It's going to be hard and you'll have a customer complaint and 99% of the time, um, it's going to end up being the module in the corner over here. But uh, always do your due diligence. Check all your powers and grounds before condemning a module. Okay. Everything's working the way it's supposed to. Pretty responsive on the graph. And if I'm not mistaken, we can have up to four PIDs on one graph. So we'll try that real quick. Yeah, so here we go. We have three. As you can see. I don't know if we can zoom in onto it. I don't think so, eh? No. So the data stream that you see here is a data stream that's going to be there at all times. So like I said, uh, personally, it's doing pretty good. For an entry-level scan tool, you got a lot of stuff that can be done with this. We'll end the session. We'll go back to the home button. We'll go to the OBD2. Now that I'm hooked up to the car, I'm going to try going to the resets and see if there's anything there. All right, it went through. Like I said, the only one that's there is the CAM protocol, so that's the only one we're going to click on. Uh, mill status off, ECU zero, ready, test completed. Perfect with that. So remember, if you want to read your codes, you go to read fault codes. You want to clear them, you go into the clear. Let's go read. There's no fault codes. That's perfect. Um, after that, we can get some live data. Uh, absolute load. We can go and select all. There's 41 PIDs for the live data. Quite a bit. On the generic side anyway, that's a, that's quite a bit. So, uh, let's go OK. Uh, absolute load. So as you can see, our uh, grams per second and everything is there. RPMs, we'll graph that real quick. And all the way up to 3,000. It's pretty responsive for being interpreted data, guys. Um, they call it live data, but as a... Don't forget, from here, it's uh, you have your sensors that are feeding to your ECU. Your ECU is feeding up to the... Uh, onto the CAN line, if you want, uh, or your whatever protocol that your vehicle uses. 
and then from there from the OBD2 port it has to enter into the scanner and then the scanner has to take and decipher that information so it's live it's getting better but uh it's still not uh perfect so we can see our closed loop status fuel system status so so far uh it's doing good with the uh, kia and, Hon and honda uh i was going to take and show you on to a dodge but i i don't have the dodge present right now so um pretty much uh this is going to be the video of uh me testing out the the c reader elite 200 uh like i said Oh yeah, I want to try one more thing. We'll come here. We'll go back to resets. We'll see if there's anything that comes in. Really quick, yes. We'll go to the resets. We'll see if there's anything. There is nothing. Upgrade. I wish that there would have been a mall in here. That would have been great. But as you can see, there's no mall. There's nothing. So I don't know if they're going to be putting the mall onto 200. Those are the ones that I downloaded already. For right now, that is what it is. So, I will be leaving this video be like that. Um, like I said, I tested it out on on Kia, on Honda. Um, it works. Uh, it's, it takes some getting used to. I'm used to my my Maxi Sys, so and the V Pecker. So uh, this was a little bit uh, different to get around, but it's for sure. If you use this every single day, you'll get faster at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little unboxing demonstration review and now for the giveaway um it's going to be very very simple so in order to be entered to win uh there's uh two things that have to be done one of course is watch the video uh two is send me a comment and it, at the end of the comment just put a uh, launch if you would like to have a chance to win this uh this code reader um i'm gonna put a little side note in there if you guys are already automotive professionals and you guys have tools that are way beyond the capabilities of this tool, uh, leave this tool for somebody who is just starting. So that way it gives a chance for the newcomers to take and win a device that isn't a uh, little $30 uh, knockoff scanner that you can buy on Amazon. Um, this guy has some pretty great uh, capabilities, as you can tell. Um, and I would like to see it go to somebody who actually wants to really get into uh, diagnosing vehicles. And this is a good starting point. Um, after using it a little bit, they can always upgrade. But if you already have a, let's just say, a a Maxi Sys or uh, a launch pad or anything like that. Leave this tool for somebody. Who will actually get some use out of it instead of just leaving it up onto a shelf collecting dust. So... With that being said, I will leave this video be, and I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time.